China just rolled the J-20 onto the Changchun flight line for its first close-up public reveal, showcasing a design its engineers call original in the world. In this video, we unpack what the static display exposes about the lifting body, canard, and strake vortex system, how flight control software validated it through Ironbird and aircraft in the loop testing, and why this signals program maturity. The first static display of the J-20 at the 2025 Changchun Air Show fundamentally changed what outside observers could verify about the aircraft. Instead of fleeting flybys, the airframe was parked only meters from spectators during the open day activities in Changchun, Jilin Province, scheduled from September 19th to 23rd. That proximity matters. It enabled a rare look at panel fit, edge treatments, and overall finish quality. Details closely tied to low observability and aerodynamic cleanliness. It was also the type's first public ground exhibition, a milestone that reframed the conversation from distant silhouettes to scrutinizable craftsmanship. On the ramp, messaging from program leadership framed the design in bold terms. The J-20's aerodynamic layout is original in the world. That claim came alongside a breakdown of what viewers were seeing, an integrated lifting body fuselage canards, strake wings, and canted vertical tails. The choice to make this statement at the aircraft side is significant because it links the narrative to observable features, the geometry of the canards, the blending of the strakes into the forebody, and the orientation of the twin tails. Close-range photography and official galleries highlighted finish work consistent with low observable priorities, smooth surfaces, carefully processed fasteners, tight seam alignment, and serrated interfaces where doors and panels meet the skin. While such details can't reveal exact signatures, they are markers of manufacturing discipline and aerodynamic hygiene. Reporting emphasized that the static display let visitors marvel at the exquisite craftsmanship, a phrase used to underscore perceived maturity and build quality. Context from independent and defense-watching outlets added scale to the moment. Coverage in the same window referenced sightings consistent with a 300 aircraft fleet, reflecting a maturing production system and broader operational fielding, even as exact counts remain debated. Program engineers described the J-20's plan form as an integrated system, a lifting body fuselage paired with canards, strake wings, and canted vertical tails, tuned to create and couple vortices across the forebody and main wing. The stated goal is ambitious, generate high lift and control authority while holding down drag and preserving low observability. Instead of treating canards as add-ons, the designers emphasize their interaction with strake and wingborne vortices, positioning the configuration itself as novel among contemporary fifth-generation airframes. This is the basis for the original in the world claim tied directly to what spectators could see at Changchun. Flight control philosophy is the second half of the story. The aircraft employs relaxed longitudinal and directional instability, intentionally stepping away from a perfectly stable baseline, so that control laws can trade stability for agility and efficiency inside stealth-first geometry. Instability introduces three-axis coupling effects, particularly with the vertical tails, those are managed through tailored control algorithms. In effect, the aerodynamics generate useful energy in the form of strong, persistent vortices and the digital flight controls harvest and shape that energy into predictable handling. This approach is common at the cutting edge, but the specific blend of flow structures and control strategy is presented as distinctive to this layout. How did the team arrive at a first flight they considered safe with this approach? They describe a layered test campaign, extensive flight quality simulations, an iron bird hardware in the loop rig to prove out actuation and control laws, and full aircraft in the loop testing with the initial pilot cadre. That chain allows engineers to explore edge cases and tune responses before the real prototype leaves the ground. Presented alongside the static airframe, those process details aim to show that the team didn't just design for performance on paper, they iterated control logic until pilots reported the handling qualities required for daily operations. It's a claim about engineering maturity as much as about aerodynamic elegance. Finally, the public remarks add two performance-oriented assertions, kept here in general terms. 
First, the aircraft pursues a very small radar cross-section through planform shaping, surface finish, and edge alignment. Second, attention to thermal characteristics aims to reduce detectability in the infrared spectrum. These factors, combined with the vortex-coupled lift strategy, are posited to yield efficient flight with control authority maintained across mission regimes. Publicly parking an advanced stealth aircraft and discussing its design choices on camera is a deliberate signal. The J-20 is framed as China's first domestically developed fifth-generation stealth fighter and a generational leap after more than a decade of development. The static reveal, placed within a national Open Day event, reinforces that framing by inviting inspection of workmanship, geometry, and fit, areas that, taken together, communicate readiness beyond one-off prototypes. The setting and tone suggest a program confident enough to let images and close-ups speak alongside high-level design commentary. Another signal is the linkage between technical claims and observable hardware. Rather than offering abstract statements, the development team highlighted the configuration, lifting body, canards, strakes, canted tails, while those surfaces sat within arm's reach of cameras and engineers. When audience members can correlate remarks about vortex coupling with the physical origins of those vortices, the conversation shifts from branding to engineering. Media galleries and photo essays emphasize surface smoothness and seam treatment, which matter for both stealth and aerodynamic cleanliness. The resulting narrative encourages viewers to weigh claims against details they can actually see. A third signal is scale and normalization. Parallel reporting around the show window referenced the appearance of what observers identified as a 300th airframe, placing the program in a high-volume context even as exact totals remain contested in open sources. Whatever the precise count, the narrative that accompanies the static reveal is not, look at our rare demonstrator, but here is a maturing fleet with repeatable build standards. From a modernization standpoint, that implies ongoing work on sustainment pilot training pipelines, and block upgrades, areas typically less visible but essential to long-term effectiveness. It also sets expectations for future disclosures, propulsion baselines, software updates, sensor integration, and any refinements to the control laws described by the developers. Finally, the open day format and media cadence hint at a communication strategy. Pair increased physical access with curated technical takeaways. This year's takeaway was aerodynamics and flight control philosophy, specifically the original in the world configuration and how engineers validated it ahead of first flight. If subsequent events apply the same pattern to propulsion or software, observers will be able to build a more complete picture without speculative leaps. Changchun wasn't just a showcase. It anchored a bold claim in hardware the public could finally examine. You saw how the lifting body, canard, and Strake's system aims to harvest vortex energy, how control laws make an intentionally relaxed airframe feel precise, and why opening the jet to close scrutiny signals program maturity. The next milestones to watch, propulsion disclosures, software growth, and training integration glimpses that confirm this trajectory. When design, process, and public access align, the story moves from speculation to evidence. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more updates on space exploration and scientific discoveries, and don't forget to leave a comment below. Also, you can visit our website, spaceinews.com. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.